You know what we have now in the cybersecurity industry? Massive multiplayer online firewalls. All right, no, I'm not a gamer, but there is a such thing as sort of a firewall MMO that I'm going to showcase in today's video. There's a really cool open source project that lives out on GitHub called CrowdSec. CrowdSec is an open source intrusion prevention system. So this project bands together a community of users such as you and I, who have maybe some information that we can give up to others. And basically it's a really cool open source community that comes together to create what they call, I guess, a massive multiplayer online game. Eh, actually more so like just a open source firewall. Let me go ahead and show you a quick example of what this MMO firewall is. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and come up with a sample environment and yes. Okay, so for my small scale, simple environment, I have two VMs running on the AWS network. Both VMs are running Ubuntu 20.04 with VM1 or the web server having Apache 2 web server software installed. Now, VM2 or the attacker machine is trying to brute force its way into the web server for its valuable information. The default Apache 2 web server page, and of course that's sarcasm. Now, Script Kitty Grant is coming in with a word list with some common passwords and a simple bash script to try to get into this web server. So it's time to to destroy Script Kitty Grant's attempts, the firewall, an MMO firewall. And also, this video has been inspired by Learn Linux TV. Go check out his video on CrowdSych in his channel. It's a great channel to learn Linux for free. So now, let's go on to this scenario. All right, so we have our overview of the environment. I went ahead and SSH'd into remote connections between the web server and the attacker machine. And this is gonna simulate a very low-level hanging attack. SSH brute forcing. I've went ahead and already installed the CrowdSec package in my web server with the repository. It's a super easy install. There's documentation in the description below. And I have my attacker here as well. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and look at the auth.log file, which will list the attempts of trying to get into this web server, which could be already happening with my sessions or sessions out on the internet. So if we go ahead and display the attempts, as you can see, there are already these sessions being attempted within the Linux machine here, of course, and yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of invalid users and you see the point. If you're interested on in gathering some statistics, I did a honeypot experiment with an SSH machine out on the internet for 30 days. There's a link in the description here, whatever. So in this case, as you can see, we have attempted sessions coming in through SSH. Let's go ahead and paint a scenario. In this case, Grant Collins, the low-level script kitty attacker, creates a small bot or script, and it's trying to, let's just say, get into this web server machine to get into, well, you already know, the Apache 2 web page. Really dumb. Finally, before I go ahead and try to attack this machine, let's take a look at CrowdSec log file. Alrighty, so here we are, we have some of these messages coming out and let's go ahead and compare this between the before and after of attempting to get into this server. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and go into our attacker machine and we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, we got this public IP address. Now in this case, I have it through AWS, but you get the point here. So let's go ahead and copy this IP. Let's go ahead and try to attempt brute force into this web server. So we'll do go ahead and do a pseudo SSH into, there we go, this IP address. I type in that password, and as you can see, it's gonna be a permission denied. This is a public key issue uh, that I have on the AWS. Don't really worry about it because we don't really even need SSH into this. I'm really showing this in terms of the attempts, so let's keep going. Now each time usually it would query for a password. Hopefully that is enough attempts and let's go ahead and see what's going on in our CrowdSec file. Okay, so after attempting to input many different SSH attempts with that public key denied error, you can see that if we go ahead and tail the CrowdSec.log file, we're gonna have a new message. And in this case, as you can see, it's a slow brute force SSH attack by this IP address, which in this case is our attacker's public IP address. So now we got it logged into crowdsec.log. What can we do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and show you two different ways that we can go ahead and automatically block these types of IP addresses. First, let's do it manually. So CrowdSec does a really cool job of showing the different types of decisions that you have implemented actively on your web server or whatever type of system that you install this in. Right now, it's only Linux compatible. So in this case, let's go ahead and do sudo cscli decisions list. 
you can list out the active decisions going on right now. In this case, CrowdStrike has already automatically blocked this IP address for four hours. You can change the default time if you want to within their configuration file. Let's say you had a big thing of IP addresses that you wanted to block, or you have a few that you really want to. In this case, what you can do is go ahead and use the decisions add command and add that IP address. So for instance, let's go ahead and try to block 12.2.3.4 as an example. So using the dash I parameter or flag, and then the 1.2.3.4, whatever IP address in this case, if we go ahead and output the decisions list now, you're going to see two IP addresses that are banned, and in this case it is 1.2.3.4. So we can manually block a list of IP addresses if we wanted to. Now don't get me wrong, manual adding of decisions is great, but that's really tedious and really not going to be scalable. So that's the need of automation comes in. And this is where CrowdSec Bouncer can be installed. Uh, and yeah, so let's go ahead and show what this means. So if we go ahead and install the CrowdSec Bouncer, once again on the website documentation. All right, perfect. So the Bouncer has now been installed. Now in this case, as you can see, what's gonna happen is let's go ahead and try SSHing once again into our web server with a brute force attack. And CrowdSec will automatically ban this IP address. So as you can see, if we have this prompt here, we can't even get into the session where it says permission denied because it's blocked that IP address. So the power of automation and scalability of this is pretty impressive. So once again, let's go into our decisions list and see what happened here. And you are already gonna know what's gonna happen. But as you can see, the IP address has been banned. We've installed the bouncer, which empowers automation. Wow, automation. Finally, I want to quickly show you the alerts list, which is gonna kind of give you a, a parsed output of that crowdsec.log file. If we go ahead and do sudo csli alerts list, you're gonna see a list of alerts, and I've already done some test sessions on this web server, so don't worry about it. But you're gonna see a list of alerts with you know what's going on here. And in this case, as you can see, CrowdSec can even identify what's going on. So SSH brute force or a slow brute force session. And there's so many different types of low level hanging attacks that CrowdSec can identify. So our script kitty attack, don't do this in, in the real world by the way, as you can see is now completely prevented automated. There's really one more thing I want to talk about that I think CrowdSec is empowering within the community. Now, although this demonstration has been small, you can really see the power of something like this in an open source community that can contribute towards an overall security goal so that we're not working in silos or in isolated different areas. We're coming together as a community and I think that that is something that is really empowering with an open source project like CrowdSec. So is it a firewall MMO? Nah, maybe sort of. But uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video today 